pornography literally allows Satan to enter the lives of people. And I'm telling you the truth, which you, you probably never heard what I just said, but when, when people expose themselves to pornographic material, they're literally inviting demonic power to come and possess them. And that's why you get child molesting and you get uh, rape and you get all this violence. We're talking about the battle against pornography, getting shoved into our schools under the guise of social justice issues, and it's all a bunch of you know what. Um, I did have someone reach out to me, a U.S. Navy vet, and he's an author of eight books on parenting and constitutional law, and he's very passionate about this subject. This is Michael Jeswick. Michael Jeswick, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, it's really great being on with you. I, I congratulate you for your courage to confront this with the law enforcement down there in Texas. It's really, really tragic that, you know, I don't like seeing women treated wrongfully. And I definitely don't want to like to see children uh, injured and damaged. And this is what was really happening with this matter. Yeah. And we, we as adults, and I've been warning the country for many years, but I'll tell you, if adults don't step up and start uh, taking action against this kind of cor corrupting the morals of the children, uh, we're going to see some worse things than COVID-19. I, I guarantee it. It's coming down. It's going to come very quickly. And I don't like having to announce that sort of thing. But this is what happens when a nation goes so corrupt that that uh, God Almighty has to step in and do something about it. And when he steps in, it's not going to be very well, very good for anybody. So I say that right up front because I teach on parenting because they are God's first authority on the earth. It isn't the government, it isn't the churches. Parents are their hands-on right there with the children and they are there to protect them and to care for them. And if you don't do those two things, especially in the spiritual sense of keeping them from being corrupted, uh, morally and you know it's just tragic that they're doing this stuff and they're doing it right under the noses while parents are busy working and earning a living and paying the taxes for these schools and libraries they're doing this to our children it's really really upsetting to me personally I really mean it yeah it's Michael and you, and you said that this isn't just an issue with our children but that there's that there's a long history of trying to corrupt our foundations with the introduction of pornography. Did you want to share kind of like the, the history of, of how this has continued to permeate and grow? Well, I'm a constitutional scholar. I'm a Bible scholar as well. And I wrote a book called Original Intent of the First Amendment According to the Founding Fathers. Okay, so they've scrubbed and purged the, the statements of the Founding Fathers. If you've taken a look at the book, the, the landmark statements of the founders, you know that they had a different uh, agenda than what's going on now. It's being propagated by the media. They, they censor specific things and they let anything that is contrary to their agenda, their global agenda. And it, it's really uh, tragic because the founders were very, very good men. Most of them are Christian people, the mothers and the fathers that started this country. And they, they wanted a good nation. They wanted uh, us to honor. And I, 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 I know that they've corrupted the First Amendment. And I've, I've sent letters, for the record, I've sent letters to each of the Supreme Court justices with a copy of my book on the original intent of the First Amendment. Mm. And I warned them. I said, if you continue to corrupt the law and the Constitution, there's going to be very, very serious consequences in our country. And there already are. Because when, when children are being raped, and I say that, I don't say they're being, you know, the, the pedophiles, they, they think that, you know, they're even trying to write in on the LGBTQ thing as, as part of the sexual alter alternatives. Okay, when, when society gets this corrupt, believe me, God's going to step in and, and people aren't going to like it. Uh, I've been warning them for years. I, I, I was became a Christian in the United States Navy when I was serving on board the uh, Naval Air Station Point Magoo. And uh, I confronted the Secretary of the Navy about promoting pornography on the base. And uh, in my book, you'll 
on fatherhood in the United States of America, there's there's a letter he sent me back. And this is important because, you know, you as a journalist, and I, I really applaud you for your courage, and I know that it's cost you to have certain convictions. And uh, I know that the guy that co-authored that book on the First Amendment, his name is Michael Citronetti. He was working on his broadcast communications major at Point Park College in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I did most of my research for, for 20 years on the history, the Christian history of the Constitution. Now, I said Christian history. People don't hear that, but that's the truth. Christians wrote the Constitution. It wasn't a bunch of pagan Satanists. Uh, it was Christian people that composed that. And we should be very thankful for that, and we should be promoted. I, I published the Constitution. Okay, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to be this. This is going to be able to be seen, but... Uh, <laughs> it looks like we can't see it, but we can link to it later. One of the problems I need to learn, you know, how things operate. <laughs> We're like all said, learning, I'm, Michael. <laughs> you know, I'm not real tech savvy, but the Constitution, uh, it, I publish it because many are very ignorant of the Constitution. And as a veteran, I, I'm an active veteran. I, I work as a chaplain for the Honor and Color Guard here in the uh, Seattle Puget Sound region. And I, I try to restore honor, uh, see, because uh, when you when you go in the military, you you have to affirm or swear uh, allegiance and uh, commitment to upholding the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And let me tell you, most of the enemies are inside the United States now. Our enemies outside are nothing compared to what's going on, especially going after children like they are. It really disturbs me personally that they're they're doing this and i hope that you'll get a whole bunch of good parents especially men with a little bit of muscle that'll that'll when you go to the police station or the sheriff's yeah, office yeah I, I i liked how you said that michael you're like now don't be offended but i think that you need to come with some man sorry, and had a man do the talking and really challenge these other officers i'm I don't have any problem with acknowledging the differences in the males and the females apparently that's that's controversial nowadays, but I have no problem admitting that we are different. God made us different, and it's a beautiful thing, and we need to play to our strengths. I just I just turned 68, so I, I've watched humanity for, <laughs> for 68 years. So I, I know what men do, and I saw that police officer, how he ch- acted toward you. And as a male, I said, you know, this guy, you know, he's just, you know. It's interesting. One of the approvals of that book is called The Stonewall. Did you see that? Yeah, Stonewall? I did see that. Do you have any insight that on that? That came out of New York. I don't know if you know the history of that, but the, mm-hmm. the LGBTQ, they, they use that that approval thing based on their their agenda. So to, and and believe me, I say leave the children alone till they're teenagers at least. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't be pushing things on children under age matter. And there are laws, let me tell you, in Pennsylvania State, there's a corruption of morals of the mi- of minor children law. So any parent can go into court with and take these people that are corrupting the morals, and that's what they're doing. They're corrupting the morals of minor children. And I don't know how many other states haven't done the research uh, that have corruption of morals of minor children, but that is a basis of a lawsuit that you can do that. It's actionable. And I just say that because you need to take action. You can't, we can't let our children be but, overthrown. But Michael, what we find is even when we point out the laws and even we, when we have the, the law on our side, who can we find to be our advocates if they refuse to take reports, if they refuse to take on cases? Where do we go? Well, up here in uh, Sonomish County, north of Seattle, where I live, the uh, the Republican Party is trying to uh, really get busy getting quality people in the public school boards because we need people that are not so willing to let children be overthrown with with profane and pornographic material because that's really what they're doing and believe me if you read my books like on fatherhood and also the i have a symposium on parent and husbandry that that deals with the eye gate and we've talked about that and i sent you a video the eye and the ear gate are god's channel into our life and, and what goes in our ear, eyes and ears goes down into our heart Okay, and Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so whatever you bring into your, through your eyes and through your ears is going to affect how your heart is. Amen to that. And this is your website, Light Eternal Publications, correct? 
Yes, uh huh. That's on. And that's Word where you, we can find your books. You've written eight of them. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are on there. Some of them aren't. So, but. And, and part books. of your passion comes from that you were. You said you were a chaplain, or are a chaplain. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a chaplain for the uh, Honor Guard and Color Guard here in the uh, Sonoma, uh, the area of, uh, you know, Seattle, Puget Sound region. So we do veteran services for uh, deceased veterans and their families. So and we also do civil civic events. Okay, Um, so I want to ask you a question because you're very well versed in the Constitution and we have what the left would like to present as a conundrum because we are very vocal and passionate about the First Amendment and how important it is to have free speech and voices heard and expression and all of that. But then the left would like to paint it that we're being hypocritical because when we find books like this in our school, we get very angry when this kind of stuff is being given to our children with pornographic images and stuff. And they'll be like, oh, well, what about the the First Amendment? So explain to me why this is an erroneous argument to make well when you study the original intent of the first amendment you find that it's totally different now uh, over the years since the the constitution was written in the bill of rights and the the bill of rights is the first amendment there's there's 10 of them okay and so when you understand the the protections we have against the government doing things to us and also allowing things to be done the problem is we got a supreme court now that's become so liberal and so out of touch with the original intent of the First Amendment, and they, they do things like saying it's a living document, and they they excuse the the corrupting of the nation. See, pornography is hated by God Almighty, and uh, He's told nations to totally wipe it out in the past. What I just said there, people don't know. God God said destroy all their pictures, mm-hmm. and that sounds funny, but in in our culture, because there's so much uh, visual and audio, the use of uh, cameras and things are totally different from what they were back in the days of the Old Testament Israel. But they created images back then, and God said to destroy them. Okay, that that's the biblical record. Okay, so God doesn't want people creating purient materials. And there's, there's laws against it, especially when you do it with children, you do this uh, kind of thing with children. There's even child pornography that they have to go after all the time. And it's it's really it's really God hates it, okay. And I warn people. I said, you know, God's going to incinerate this stuff. He's going to wipe it out off His earth. This belong, earth belongs to God, and people are doing things that are creating very very difficult and bad situations, like uh, domestic violence. I guarantee you, most men that commit domestic violence, or sometimes women, is because they've been exposed to pornographic materials. And the truth is that Jesus said the light of the body is the eye. And if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is evil, the word is paneros in the Greek there, it means uh, a twisted, distorted view of life. Okay, mm-hmm. That's what it means. Your whole body will be full of darkness. And if the light is in you is, is darkness, uh, you, uh, how great is that darkness? Okay, so pornography literally allows Satan to enter the lives of people. And I'm telling you the truth. Which you, you probably never heard what I just said, but when when people expose themselves to pornographic material, they're literally inviting demonic power to come and possess them, and that's why you get child molesting and you get uh, rape and you get all this violence because these spirits that come in, they're out to destroy. Mm-hmm. Jesus said that Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay, so it, when you understand that connected with the pornography, it is a it's forbidden by God first of all. Okay. And then the law is there. The First Amendment was originally intended for Christian freedom, not pornography. It was not created for pornography, believe me. And if the founders were alive right now, they would go to war, I guarantee you, against these pornographers. And I'm saying this seriously. I, I really mean what I'm saying. This is corrupting our society. It's creating all kinds of plagues. It is a scourge. Uh, it's destroying honor and respect between men and women. It, it is a cause of most child abuse and child molesting. And and I know what I'm saying, because I've done a lot of research. And also, I, I live personally in my childhood under this kind of thing. Okay, so I understand what it does to people. I, I know intimately what it does. And so when I say it, I say it from not reading in a book. I say from personal experience, I see what people uh, become when they engage in that kind of activity in pornography. Are you saying that you knew people that um, 
victimized others or are you saying that you were yes, a victim? Yes, yes. Right. And, you know, my, my family life story, I was a Roman Catholic for 21 years. I became a Christian in the U.S. Navy and God opened my eyes to this this great evil in our society. And it, I know it because my father was a barber, okay? And so Hugh Hafner and Larry Flance and all the pornographers, they had a target audience to go after. And, and barber shops was a place they wanted to get their material. So I know what it does to people. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. And, and very, very, uh, you know, my, my personal family members abused by this this whole activity. And so I, I know what it is. Also, you so say your audience knows I was born the year and month Hugh Hefner started his magazine, uh, Playboy. Okay, and he got two thousand dollars from his mother, who was a Methodist woman, very devoted Methodist woman, and he started Playboy magazine with it without her knowledge. Okay, and there's a lot of history people don't know, and I do a lot of historical background research, so I I know things that I try to communicate. I, I have a number of books that try to educate people on American history because we've seen our nation being overthrown. And when you go after children, you're really, you know, doubling down against a good, healthy society. Believe me. When you, I think we're seeing it and we're seeing the uptick and we're seeing what uh, it's probably not popular to say, but what pornography in general is doing. Pornography in yes. any form is is destroying society. It's leading yes. to the perverse nature of targeting children to be victims. And um, I know it's a huge problem. And so some, I mean, plenty of even Christians have a problem with this. So it's probably hard for some to hear, but this is, this is a big, big problem. Michael, um, we're running out of time. So remind me where people, I know you've done so much research on this and it doesn't get enough credit because you don't have enough eyes on it. So where can people find all of your books? Well, best place to get the book, my book on fatherhood in the United States of America, it took years to try to get that published because there's such a hostility. Uh, they, there really isn't a war on the male gender, but it's also on the female gender indirectly. But on Amazon Kindle, you can download the book. It's very inexpensive there. And uh, I ask people to write a good book review and uh, give it a uh, Amazon star rating because that helps uh, people to. Can they understand. just search for your last name then? Uh, yes, but if if they put the the title "Fatherhood in the United States of America" in in the search engine or my my name, all right, great. We'll we'll link to it later too.